So um, I'm going to kind of pass it over to Ian now, who's going to kind of share his screen, and then we're going to just talk you through uh, the process of of this hack. So uh, thank you, Ian. Have you? Uh, great. I can see your your screen there. So. Um, so in terms of the first thing that we're going to do uh, or Ian's doing is that we've we've signed in to uh, an online AI tool called ChatGPT. Chat so um, ChatGPT you can use for all sorts of different things. Um, you, you can just go and ask it a question or ask it to do a task and it will ultimately either come back with an answer or do it for you. So and you can give it kind of a very you know, basic um, uh, question and level of detail, or you can actually get really quite complex about it. Um, we are running a session on ChatGPT um, in a few weeks, um, so kind of look out for that webinar. But in terms of the purpose for today, um, what Ian's gone and done is, you know, he's just typed into ChatGPT, Chat you know, create a convincing looking HTML email from no before, prompting the user to click on a link uh, to set up uh, SSO, which is called single sign-on, uh, with their Microsoft 365 account. That is the only thing he's typed into ChatGPT. Um, what ChatGPT has then done is, you can see below, is a load of kind of complex code. We're not going to go into the detail of this, but ultimately it's converted that um, question or that request from Ian into some code um, that that will that will create us the email uh, with all the links and the tools, you know, off the back of that. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, there is a note on there that says, as always, please remember that this code is for example purposes only. It should not be used for any malicious activity. So, um, yeah, I will give that. <laughs> so, and, and again, we are, this is a purely a simulation that we're doing. Um, it's contained within our lab environment. Um, so, you know, this is certainly not out in the, in, in the wild. Yeah, so that's created basically this email. This is the HTML code. Yeah, so from so from that code, um, kind of just putting that, in, you know, converting that into a web page. And again, we could, you know, we're, we're keeping this quite simple and basic today. We could go and modify this and, and make that look even nicer, um, you know, with you know with a little bit more kind of coding experience or even giving ChatGPT a little bit more information to add colours and things like that into there or kind of branding, um, but really quite quite. You know, quite simple and straightforward to do, but we've got a simple looking email um, with a button, you know, and kind of let you read through the email itself. But ultimately, there's a button that says, you know, set up single sign on with Microsoft 365. So that's the action that, that we want people to do. So moving on from there, um, we uh, we are using a another tool called um, GoFish. So as I said before, as GoFish is it's, it's effective like a, an email uh, marketing tool, um, which it's it's an open source uh, piece of software, but its legitimate purpose is actually to send legitimate online training and security awareness um, emails to businesses uh, to support um, to support the cyber cyber awareness strategy. Um, what we're going to do with no before though is we need to create an email template so using the code that we generated in chat gpt all ian has done here is copied and pasted that code into the html format within here and that's created his email template so in in essence once you've got this software installed that would take about 30 seconds uh, to create that email and just you know to go to chat gpt copy and paste that code straight in here and and straight away we've now got our email template what we are what we then need to do is to um the button that we've got within the email itself that says to set up the single sign-on we're just amending one line of the code to add in there the um basically the malicious link that we want the users to um that we want the users to click on so that's where we're just going to jump into another tool now called evil jinx so evil jinx is you know the clues in the name is is really the nasty bit that sits in amongst this so um using evil jinx we can create what it's called a lure 
Um, but ultimately, we're going to create a link using the in Microsoft um, online.co.uk domain. And you can see the link that's been generated, you know, at the at the bottom of that email. Now, all we're going to do is to take a copy of that link that's been generated using Evil Jinx, and we're going to reply, you know, and we're going to paste that into the email itself, uh, which, kind of, as you can see, Ian's already done there. Using GoFish, um, because we need to do the email verification piece, um, we are. We've we've already set this up to link into SendGrid, so that that gives us the capability of sending what looks like a legitimate email that's going to tick all those boxes, um, that's ultimately going to verify that this is a legitimate email domain that meets all the complexity requirements, and we're going to route it through a legitimate email server. Um, so there's a much higher chance of this email actually being delivered to the user and not getting caught in the spam filter. What we're then going to do is we we add our users in here. So, you know, the the hacker is going to um, have a, a list of email addresses that he's kind of stolen or captured or or, um, or has gained access to from somewhere. And it's going to it could populate this with you know thousands and thousands of email addresses in there. So there's a really broad ranging campaign that, that runs and it's going to send via SendGrid that email template that we've created um, to thousands and thousands of users. Through the platform, then we can then track that the email has been delivered, you know, whether they've clicked on the link, um, you know, uh, whether they've submitted any data off the back of there. So in real time, the hacker can watch this kind of GoFish platform. He's just sent all those emails out to everybody and he can see, right, okay, I've had, you know, somebody's clicked on the link over here. Um, and once he sees so that somebody's clicked on the link within that email, what he will then do is jump into Evil Jinx. And within here, um, we, you know, he will start to be able to see that um, the, the, the credentials that have been captured. So I kind of let Ian kind of go through the next step now that we'll, we'll kind of simulate this, this whole process. Yeah, so we've we've set the phishing campaign. We've sent a couple of test emails to uh, a couple of our, our targets. Um, so this is one of our target users. Um, I think it's Alex. No, Alan, Alan De Young. Um, so this is the email that they've received. Um, so it looks it's come straight into their inbox. It hasn't gone into their junk email folder. Um, it looks quite legitimate. You hover over the link, it goes to trusted.nobefore.co.uk. So again, it, it, it hides the, the malicious link. So, so this, is, this is a really, really important point to understand. So historically in cyber awareness training that, that we've given, one of the tips that you give to people is, look, check where the emails come from. OK, well, actually, if we check this really closely, um, we can see it's not the legitimate no before email address, but it's very similar. So we, we could be really easily tricked into thinking that that is genuine. But what we've always said to people is you've got to hover the mouse over the link because that will tell you where it's actually going to go. Now, in this case, it's not doing that. Um, it's masked it completely um, that it's going to this kind of no before domain. Now, it would have looked quite obvious previously that it was going to go somewhere else. So this is because what we'll see is once we click on this link, it's going to actually redirect us to the fake um, Microsoft login page um, that we've created. So as you can see in the URL address box at the top, it's gone to login.inmicrosoftonline.co.uk, um, which isn't the no before, you know, the trusted no before link that we were seeing when we hovered the mouse over. So the, the users clicked on the link, we we're in via the malicious address, we go to sign in. Now, the important thing to notice here is even though this looks like it's a fake login page, it's pulled through all of our custom branding. So, you know, it, you know, all, all the customization that's been done on the on the customer's tenant here is pulled through the branding, it's changed the image. So this is actually logging us in to the genuine Microsoft um, 365 page. So we pop the password in, which we can see is a complex password. It's now going to prompt us to uh, complete a multi-factor authentication request. So we're going to do a number verification match um, in this case. 
So this is all what the target, this is all what the user who's received the phishing email is kind of going through because they think they're going to set up this single sign on process. So we complete the verification. And from a user's perspective, um, they've kind of got, okay, it's a little bit odd. It signed me into my 365 page. You know, this is my normal 365 login, um, but it's not necessarily done what's expected. So they might just kind of move on or they, at that point they might log a request um, or they might try and contact the sender. But but ultimately they've, uh, they've signed in and verified to their Microsoft 365 credentials. Now, when we go back to Evil Jinx, what we can see has happened here. Um, and Ian, I don't know if you just kind of want to talk through what's on the screen. Yeah, so what's happened is that um, the attacker can see the username in clear text. It can also see the password that's been typed in in clear text. But also, more importantly, it says all authorization tokens are intercepted. So if I type in sessions, I can see that it's captured that token. Um, so look green says that it's captured the token. So if I type in sessions 11, this is that secret token that Charlie was mentioned earlier. Um, that is what is needed by the attacker to actually authenticate as that user without using MFA, without having to know the username and password. So yeah, it's, it's just basically a load of encrypted code. Um, that is this token that is going to inject. So and th this this to me is the frightening bit now of how simple once the hackers got that um, got that token. Th this is how simple it is for him then just to sign in as as you. So what I'm using now is a, a little extension in Firefox called Cookie Editor, which allows you to inject or import a cookie in. So all I'm going to do is paste that token into here and click import. And then if I refresh the page, it signed me in as Alan without having to multi-factor authenticate, without typing my username and password, it's just let me straight in. So hopefully you can see the, the, the final bit of that process for the hacker to gain access um, to your account is, is unbelievably easy for them to do. Um, this is a fairly straightforward process. You know, we're, we're showing this in, in, in its basic form. Um, all of the tools. Uh, so, but, and again, obviously the bit to remember is once they've signed in, they've got all of your permissions. So all of your files, all of your emails, all of your historical content, you know, access to your kind of OneDrive and SharePoint and shared calendars, you know, all sorts of research that can then be done about, uh, about your organization all through somebody's mailbox. Um, and they they will then typically go and do some additional steps to main to maintain that they they keep access. So there's some technical things that they can do in the background, like creating what's called an app password. Um, and if they, and if that isn't disabled within your tenancy, um, that will leave the hacker with permanent access into your mailbox, and they'll just sit there. You know, they're not looking necessarily these days to go and do a smash and grab and try and destroy data and information. They'll sit there and watch email transactions um, and, and, and just wait um, for, for the right opportunity. So, you know, where you've got things like, you know, invoices that are going backwards and forwards, if they can get, uh, gain information that will allow them to sp send another spear phishing email to somebody else, um, they'll, they'll kind of do that as well. So um, hopefully you can kind of see how kind of easy and straightforward that is. I'll, um, so let me just kind of take the, uh, just take the screen back. Just. So what can we do um, to stop this? Some preventative measures. So firstly, um, going to some of the basics is ensure your software and systems are regularly patched and maintained. We, we still need multi-factor authentication in place for, 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 for all systems where possible, especially where you've got kind of any sensitive information or data around. Um, we strongly recommend that you implement kind of a robust cyber awareness training and testing platform. Um, know before is one of the best ones out there. Um, I've seen lots of different ones over the years, uh, but in terms of the content and the material that's easy for people to watch and to get people engaged in, 
um, that's something that we strongly recommend and we you know we can we can certainly work with you um, in terms of getting that implemented um, making sure that you've got a robust password management system um, in place that we're making sure that we've got strong unique passwords for for kind of multiple services um, again, we recommend something called Keeper, um, but again, there's lots of other kind of different products um, that are out there. Um, in terms of protecting against this type of attack specifically, um, what the thing that we need to do moving forward is not just verify the user and the user's credentials. From a business perspective, we need to make sure that we're verifying the device that you're going to access your system from as well. So we need to make sure that things like your laptops and desktop computers and your mobile phones and tablets are enrolled within a device management platform. Now, if you have the Microsoft 365 Business Premium license, um, that comes with something called Intune. Um, and Intune gives us the capability of enrolling all of your business devices um, you know, into the kind of Microsoft 365 platform. So we can then say that actually to access your system, not only do you need to have a username and a password and multi-factor authentication, but you can also only access it from a device that we know about. So it stops people from picking up kind of little Johnny's laptop out of his bedroom um, that we don't know, you know, the level of security that's in place on that device or whether it's got some kind of infection around it. But equally, where we've got a hacker that sat, you know, somewhere else in a different location, um, unless they've stolen one of your devices as well, they're not going to be able to gain access to your system. So that's the way that we do it within kind of the Microsoft 365 landscape and using that business premium license. Um, the other option that you've got around this is using what's called a hardware token in, instead. So we can set the other called uh, FIDO keys, but um, the, the common one that we use is something called a UB key. And it just means that actually, rather than verifying the device itself, a device that you use, you would need to have to um, plug in your your um, security token or your you know your UB key um, to verify that it is you um, that's accessing the system and it's not just somebody that's gained, gained access to your credentials. And they work the same. You know, they've got like little NFC scanners on there, so they work the same way in terms of verifying your phone and kind of keeping uh, keeping access um, in terms of that way. So those are kind of two kind of easy ways to kind of prevent against this type of attack. Um, it doesn't compensate for you know making sure that you've got a robust cyber awareness um, training program that goes on within within your organisation. Um, Lots of organisations will do those as kind of one off sessions, um, which are great because, you know, it makes sure that everyone's kind of, you know, that they kind of get it. And they get a chance to engage and ask questions and kind of really, really understand the whole process. But ultimately, what tends to happen is when you only deliver those as one off sessions um, that two, three months goes down the line and people are back into their normal day to day and you just naturally forget some of the things that you've been told. Um, so making sure that that cybersecurity awareness piece is done on a regular basis is 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 kind of really really important. Okay, um, so that's that's it for the session today. Um, if we've got any questions um, that that anyone would like to ask, or feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask a question, or if you want to stay back, um, you know we're more than happy to answer any questions that that you may have got. Um, in terms of a follow up, we will send you all um, an email um, with a link to the recording of the session today. Um, and there's a, there'll be an opportunity on, on that email as well. So if you'd like to book a call with us and discuss any of these elements in, in more detail, um, you know, we're, we're more than happy to kind of set up a call and, and kind of run through those with you. OK, lovely guys. Thank you very much. Um, and hopefully we look forward to uh, speaking to you soon.